My name is Garrett Murphy, a graduate of the class of 2008, and on behalf of everyone at Walnut Hill School for the Arts, I'd like to welcome you to the first in our series, Spring Art Crush. I am pleased to be joined by my co-host, Director of Artistic Studies, Nikki Conrath. Thank you, Garrett. Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight's crush uh, will feature our writing, film, and media arts department uh, to celebrate their largest class of graduating seniors. There are 13 of them uh, this year. Uh, these accomplished storytellers will reflect on their time in the program, the successes and challenges of multidisciplinary work, and news about where their creative process will take them next. First, let's hear from department head Margaret Funkhauser and faculty member Matt Zeifert about what the department has been up to so far this quarter. Hi, Matt. Hi, Margaret. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, thanks. Thanks for joining us. So I, I know this has obviously been a year unlike any other, and we're curious to know, you know, what, what are some of the classes you've been offering? Uh, How has it been going this quarter? Well, this quarter feels, I think one way to describe this year is every quarter feels like its own year. Because if I think back at the fall, we were all online and it, it, it sort of feels like a hazy dream now, but we offered classes online. And one of the things that, um, and then we had seniors on campus. So we taught seniors on campus and everyone else was still remote. And then last quarter, the whole program did script to screen for their quarter class. And then now we're mostly back. We run some remote sections and some live sections, but it does feel, I think, the closest to um, before times. And um, I'll just say in terms of like classes offered, we offered classes by quarter. So there was students were um, really focusing on two or three classes um, at one time. So, you know, we've offered the whole array of classes. So in terms of what I've taught, I've offered uh, a poetry class in quarter one, prose writing in quarter two, and now song lyric writing this quarter with one section live and one section remote. Yeah, and uh, on my end, uh... I've, I've had the opportunity to sort of really take the work that I do and try and figure out how to uh, work with students who are both remote and in person. And this year I've had the pleasure of being able to teach game design in quarter one. Uh, and then we moved into storyboarding during quarter two, which uh, was able to sort of set everybody up well for our script to screen project, which occurred during quarter three, which was our department wide project, uh, where everybody sort of comes together uh, and unites under with one goal. Uh, and then this quarter, I've had the pleasure of teaching a podcasting class, which is uh, really sort of pushes what uh, we can do both in person and remote and gives everybody sort of uh, a lot of opportunities to craft stories with audio. And in terms of the faculty who aren't with us on the Zoom today, um, Rona Noon offered uh, playwriting and screenwriting online and then, you know, was a core um, supporter in the script to screen and he is offering now a live script workshop. So students are taking scripts they wrote earlier this year and workshopping them. And our photography teacher, Catherine McVetty, taught digital photo online for two quarters and was part of the script to screen team. And she's finally teaching darkroom on campus, which like for those, you know, if alums are watching or, you know, like they know that that's such a important class in our department and to be able to offer it to students. Um, this quarter is very meaningful. 
No, that's great. And I'm curious, you know, just for any folks out there uh, watching that might be new to WOFMA, can you just real quick remind everybody what sort of the ethos of the department is? I know it really stems from uh, storytelling. Is that right? That is the thing that sort of ties the classes together. And often those stories move between disciplines or genres. So what like this week we are putting on our sort of annual presentation of black and white and there's a there's an animated film um, photo montage piece by Kiha on that started as a short story and then moved into photography and then now it is a kind of hybrid piece and so that's what we sort of we love that if things can start in one class and then be translated through different forms we really believe in collaboration um we're very much the non nobi solum crew so thank you margaret and matt uh, for that overview and i think it would be wonderful now to welcome the students uh so if you guys would like to turn on your cameras and come into view, that would be wonderful. And uh, then I think we will just start uh, by having you introduce yourselves. And I'm just going to go down uh, my line on the Zoom call. So Annie, would you like to start? Um, yeah, I can. So hi, I'm Annie. I'm a four-year senior at WOFMA, and I'm from San Jose, California. Is there anything else I should mention? No, I think that's great. Who do you want to toss it to? Um, let's go with Debbie. <laughs> Hi, Annie. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Debbie Shi. I'm also a four years senior in Wolfma, and I'm from Budapest, Hungary. Great. Who do you want to give it out to next? Uh, Menji. Thank you, Debbie. And uh, I'm Benji. I'm a first year um, senior Wolfma major. And I'm from Moscow, Russia. And I'm gonna uh, get you to uh, Rocco. Hi, so yeah, my name is Rocco Masoni. Uh, I'm a one year senior Wolfma, but I've been at Walnut Hill for three years. And uh, I'm from Harvard, Massachusetts. So yeah, and then uh, Amir gets it to you. Hi, my name is Amir Taylor and I'm a three year senior Wolfma and I'm from Nassau, Bahamas. And um, back to you, I think. Yeah, that was everybody, I think. Thank you so much. So I will start uh, by having a question for Debbie, since I meet her a little bit more often uh, than the other students, because I have the pleasure of advising uh, the senior reps from the different departments. Uh, so Debbie, I was wondering, in four years, do you feel that your focus has shifted? Like, did you think you were going to be more of a writer in year one and have now moved to something else? Has it gone up and down? Have different artists inspired you along the way to sort of make a choice or did you know what you wanted and stuck with it right from the very beginning? That's a good question because I feel like I definitely shifted my focus like a lot during my time here. Um, well, when I was just a little freshman, I had planned on, well, I what I was best at was like fiction sort of and I wanted to definitely write like my dreams were like being an author and like writing like actual like <laughs> fantasy style books and things like that and I'm laughing now because it seems like such a long time ago but after I came here I, I definitely explored more like more visual mediums and I've developed a passion for photography as well as filmmaking but definitely <laughs> photography to a larger extent and I've sort of drifted away from my fiction roots. Um, I My um, main passion now, which is also my senior project, is definitely poetry. And I'm also interested in nonfiction as well. So it's been changing a lot. And I'm just glad I got the chance, like while I was here, to explore all of these different aspects of like storytelling. Well, and speaking of change, Rocco, I know that you started off in the theater department. Do you want to talk about the sort of uh, transfer and experience coming from there into, into WOFMA? Yeah, so that was a really interesting time because at that point I had been a theater major for two years, but like halfway through my junior year, I wasn't really, you know, getting that same fire and passion from theater that I used to. And I sort of started like having some existential crises with myself, figuring out like, you know, 
why am I doing this now if I'm not passionate about it? And I realized subconsciously that what I love to do is still create art, but I love to do it my way, tell my own story. And um, Woofma kind of gave me that opportunity and I loved things like editing. I loved putting videos together, um, things like that. I love working with audio. Um, so that kind of made me want to transition. And the process was, uh, it wasn't difficult in the sense that it was hard, but it was difficult in the sense that I was making such a big change that I didn't know how it would affect me. But I can now definitely say it was the right choice. Like I, I haven't even been here for a full year and I've already sparked so many passions in me that I didn't even know I had before joining WFMA. And like, like the community is awesome. Students are awesome. And I, I just love it so much. You know, I love, I love theater too, but like, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where it's like you, when you know you've made the right decision uh, to make such a, you know, big choice like that uh, really hits you. So yeah, it's been amazing so far. I actually have a question for you, Rocco, on that, like how, what's the biggest change? I always imagine that as an actor, you know, everything's focused on you and like, how is that, how is that different? Was that a relief to not have to constantly build completely self-focused or how did that transpire for you? Yeah. So it's kind of interesting because in theater, you're taught a lot to, you know, kind of um, look at yourself in any different way besides like how you would normally look at yourself this is so weird to describe um but it's like you know because in theater you put yourself into a different story and you have to change yourself to be someone else but in wufma you get to create your own stories with your characters and you get to use something from inside yourself that you can create yourself um and that was kind of like the biggest shift and change in like artistically thinking um and that was just one of my favorite things was being able to tell my own story my way you know using everything i have and not relying on someone else's work to do it so that was definitely the biggest biggest change for sure That's really now i'm I, i'm curious annie you're you're one of uh one of the four year seniors in the department as well and, and i'm curious to know from your point of view what, what are some things that have stood out to you some memories from your your four years in the department particularly um meaningful to you either good or bad i'm not sure why but the first one that popped into my head was when uh my freshman year probably like the second week or so of school when we were just starting classes uh margaret pulled me and debbie aside after class to to like to tell us to stop talking during class <laughs> i'm not sure why but i have a feeling that i'm gonna really remember that forever because it was just like it just it just made such an impression on me like I was there in high school with my friend and I really felt like um, things were starting to change in a way. I'm not sure what about that memory like says that but to me it holds like a really special place in my heart, especially because um, Debbie and I haven't gotten pulled aside for talking to each other in class in years now so yeah. <laughs> Well, that's good. I mean, I have to say I, I have a, a similar memory, but it didn't come until senior year and perhaps it was too late for me. So I'm glad that the, the lessons stuck for you. Um, and and I'm curious, too. Uh, I think everybody's been working on a senior project. Is that right this year? Um, and do, do any of you want to share anything about that experience or, or what you've been working on? Uh, I guess I could, if, uh, if that's all right. Um, Cause my process has been so interesting. So um, originally what I set out to do for my senior project was to adapt a script I wrote in a class um, in quarter two and adapt it into a, into a film or at least the first act of it. Um, and my process has been so rough. Matt knows like Murphy's law hit me in the worst way possible because I could only film on the weekends with my friends at certain times but like some things happened like i'd sprain my ankle uh one of my friends was in quarantine like things just kept happening and i couldn't get it done so then i had to shift my project and me and matt worked out a new thing that i could do where i showed all the polished footage i have and then i go into depth about breaking down the film and like talking about the tech process and working with my friends and how that collaboration worked and all that stuff so that was pretty interesting because it was just a complete change from what i originally set out to do um but i still i think what i have came out great and i'm still really proud of it so yeah i'm wondering um sorry go ahead margaret 
No, I was just going to jump in and say that in WFMA, we love putting process on display. And so I think in some ways, and, and you're not the first senior to hit those obstacles and those roadblocks. And I think one of the things that we just really want to emphasize is that, you know, like beautiful process is beautiful product. And, and I think other seniors probably are going to talk about some of their process too during the show. I was really curious about everybody's experience or influence uh, from having the opportunity to work with guest artists because you might not know this, but WFMA is really one of the departments that um, is able to bring in uh, a lot of guest artists for a much longer period of time typically than other departments do who might just have a master class or two. So I'm just wondering over the course of the years if there were any people and projects. I know the Old South Meeting House came up um, before we started. Um, so I'm just wondering if anybody had any thoughts about being influenced by guest artists and how it affected your work. So Amir, I think you were the one mentioning that. Yeah, I, I knew my number was called just now. So, <laughs> um, it well, first of all, I want to say in sophomore year, we got a chance um, to do a project with Ilya, I can't remember the last name. Vidrin. Uh, that. And um, we got a chance to do a project with him, and he was just brought in. And at first, he was brought in to us to do a lot of, process stuff and we started writing with some stuff first and then it was revealed to us that we were going to be able to get a chance to go into boston regularly for a few weeks actually i think we did it four times so maybe each week for four weeks sorry and um we did that and we went into boston and it was just both working with an outside artist that we didn't know and that had a totally different style than the rest of us in terms of you know, in WFMA, we normally get some type of parameter, some type of point to get to, whereas he brought us into the Old South Meeting House, and that was our space, and that was our only parameter, and he basically said, come up with something, come up with some meaningful piece of art, come up with poetry, photography, um, uh, maybe like a documentary or some type of video, whatever you want, come up with something. Even I think he even mentioned come up with a song. And everybody was going crazy at the first two weeks because we didn't know what to do. This felt foreign to us. We didn't know how to make art without somebody telling us this is what you can't do and this is what you can do and this is the point that you're trying to get to. But after a while, through each other, maybe like teaming up with each other and also um, working on our own, we figured it out. And we came up with a lot of different types of documentaries and works and poetry and stuff like that. So I really appreciated that because th that was an artist that came in and sort of empowered us to do our own stuff and do what we wanted and didn't give us too much of a didn't give us too much rules and rules are good, but at the same time, that was an experience to um, have to ourselves that say, you know, I came up with that from scratch. And it was that one. And then my next one was at the ending of sophomore year as well, we got a chance to do a songwriting class with Margaret and it started with Margaret. And at the, well, during the class, we got a chance to write some songs so we did blues we did american um, american something american standards i don't know um something like that pop songs country songs whatever we wanted to write and um we even brought in some of our own genres that maybe we grew up with or were close to us or meant something to us and we wrote songs to them and we did some funk songs and that's when all of us met louise resto and um uh, Nikki brought him in as well, and we all worked with him. We were also excited to work with him, and we got to go into the studio, which wasn't really the studio at that time. It was just a room with a piano in it, and I think the theater majors used to use that room, and that was like the first time that it was the studio, and coming back to that, 
like the next year, our junior year, we walked into that studio and there was a piano, there was a mic, there was big boom poles, there was um, like two more pianos in there, a lot of equipment, headphones and stuff like that, and a big computer. And that's when it actually turned into like a real official studio. And now it's the Purple Note Studio. And in that sophomore year, we got to share our songs with other composers and they put their music to it. And that was one of the times where we got the chance to just let go a little bit of our projects and give them to someone else to see what they can put on it. Because a lot of the times we just have our projects and we just um, do what we want with it. But we got a chance to work with other composers in the community as well. So that whole songwriting class, songwriting studio, that jump kicked my senior project. I, I was like, this is the inspiration for it. So I really appreciated that. Well, thank you, Amir. And I know we're all looking forward to, to seeing what you've all come up with in, in your senior year. And I'm curious, Benji, uh, to go to you. You are a one-year senior in what must be the strangest year to come to Walnut Hill because it started remote. Um, what if, what's your experience been like being a one-year senior during this COVID-19 uh, period? It's a great question, and I've been thinking about this uh, recently, and I came to the conclusion that despite only being here for, for a semester, basically, the rest of the time was basically remote, I did end up um, meeting so many people that kind of gave me this, like, space to remember, like, interesting things from my time here and sort of, like, encountering interesting artistic and just, like, social obstacles that create um, really interesting memories that I will carry on um, like in my future life and and just like career or whatnot. And if there is a specific memory I can recall or sort of like uh, an instance that, one of the instances that really um, speaks vol volumes about my experience here, which was not the longest, but um, certainly important it would be like a rather climactic moment was when we screened our J term projects and we would all, all the movements would gather and watch them like in one sitting and many other, like you could invite people, they could watch it with you. And I remember specifically um, how whenever, whenever we would watch a movie, uh, I would make eye contact with, with fellow Wolfmas and, you know, with my crewmates and it would be like a, non-verbal conversation about how a moment from that movie that that feels so important to us how it came about we're like watching the movie and then an interesting moment pops up and then no one knows how it came about but I make contact with my crewmate and they know I'm making the eye contact and to me like it's hard to it's hard to get the idea across but it, it felt so esoteric and it felt so personal and um it it, it was just how do I, how do I say it? It was something I will carry on um, further into my life. And yeah, it, it was definitely a very special moment, very personal and very, very intimate, so to say. Yeah. Well, that's great. Do, do any of you have other standout memories from your experience, certainly during the past year or, or however many years you've been a member of the Wally Hill community? Going to the Old South Meeting House in Boston, it was just the rides there. And I spoke a little bit of how we got into vans and traveled there. Um, it was like maybe like 40 minute trips. And um, it was just us in the vans playing music. Some people knocked out, some people on their phones, some people like doing their dance in the seat. We couldn't really move around, but we were just having a good time. And it was just um, just all of us in our department, all of the Wolfmas. And I think it was mostly sophomores, but we had one freshman in our crew as well. And we just enjoyed each other's time and joked around in the vans and um, was just getting ready to do what we wanted to do and what we loved to do. And like before we separated and went into our own, you know, veins in the Old South Meeting House. So it was that. And then coming back from the Old South Meeting House, we would miss dinner. So we got the opportunity to like do Chipotle and um, this other burger place. And we just want to say, well, I just want to say thank you, Margaret, for buying us food. That was the best food of our lives at that time. And uh, that was great. 
I appreciate that. I remember that memory. And like all of us were knocked out completely just coming back from the old South Maiden house in the vans because we were just tired, just running around for three hours um, trying to get our project. So all of us were just knocked out in the van. But I remember that. And also generally in the um, speaking of bringing artists into the community, there was a time when last year, I believe it was. Yeah, it was last year. I think the body positivity, um, Miss Freda brought in for body positivity week or month, um, this group called Pretty Big Movement. And they, that was like one of my favorite experiences in the school. Well, one of my, I think that was my favorite experience in this school. And they got a chance to give us all a masterclass. So it wasn't like they just came and taught the dance majors they opened up the Arts 360, which is a program in our school now, and which started last year. And they opened up the Arts 360 hip hop class, um, which anyone could have come to, but they opened it up and there was like, maybe like 30 more students that came into the dance studio than was already there. And nobody cared. It was just us dancing and having fun. And we learned choreography. And all of us got a chance to do, some of us got a chance to do what we don't normally do on a regular basis. So um, we also got to explore genres like dance hall and um, hip hop music and um, soca music as well in that actual masterclass. And nobody cared. It was just everybody hyping each other up and having a good time. And I really appreciated that because that was a chance that um, dance culture was, uh, showcased in the school and black culture was showcased in the school as well and nobody took offense to it everybody just genuinely just wanted to be there and support each other and uplifted each other and dance around and goof around and it was just awesome so i appreciated that moment in the school that's tremendous uh, oh <laughs> sorry oh, no go go ahead debbie I'm, I'm, i was gonna say i was thinking this whole time of like my favorite memories and there's a lot but i think um one of them would be when well usually like when we had our after black on white and we'd put so much work into it and it used to be like a massive process and i remember my first my, like my freshman year black on white and i did like the scripts and i had like seniors and like my sister and all these people acting in it and i just really I felt like so proud of myself. Like I, after like the show's over, like everyone comes to congratulate you and stuff. Um, and everyone's like hugging and everyone's like kind of emotional. I think like that feeling like freshman year after Black on White was like one of the first times where I felt like, you know, like hard work really pay off. So I really liked that memory. And also there's this one random memory of songwriting class sophomore year, I believe. And we all did these presentations on like a genre of music. And like, I did my like K-pop and I don't remember what Amir did, but his genre was a jam. And so after like his presentation, we all just got up and we like danced in the upstairs of Wolfman in the dark, like because <laughs> the projector is pulled down. So there's no light. And we we're all just randomly dancing and trying our best. I don't think that was very good, but that was really cute moment. I'll just, I'll sort of echo some of those memories because, you know, I love teaching the students and that is really meaningful to me. But it is those small moments that sort of stick with you. And this class, the class of 2021, you know, we have still had, you know, we have probably the largest, we have the largest class, but, and we have the largest class of four year seniors. And it's a class that came in as a powerhouse and is leaving as a powerhouse. And is almost like, I just I can't, I don't quite have the metaphor, which is odd for me, but like there's the this, this snowball and it's just gathered people and gathered momentum and, and you know, to add in a mirror and then, you know, to bring in Rocco and Benji. And I'll just say for all the seniors who aren't here right now, um, it's just been, it's just been very meaningful to uh, share that with them. And I remember those car trips and I remember going to the art museums and walking around the pond at Wellesley and those things stick with you too. And all along the way, they have been really, I think, but of course I have like the adult view, 
so warm and welcoming to students who have come in. You know, Matt came in as a sophomore <laughs> with them, and it's just been it's just been really nice to see feel their sort of collective um, ness. So one of the things that we were hoping to find out uh, from the students, you know, today is sort of how they feel like they're they will carry their creativity from the program forward with them wherever they may be going. So I'm going to ask them and to talk about that in their own way and in their own words. Um, so I'll start with you, Annie. Um, how do you feel like WFMA will f take you into the future? What is the future? What comes to mind first is kind of like how Debbie was talking about earlier. Um, like I came into the program as a writer and then at the time I wasn't really interested in anything else. Like I didn't really watch movies. I didn't care about TV shows, stuff like that. But um, I think that in being able to experience all of those things, even if I didn't necessarily like want to or like feel the need to when I was a freshman, I think it helped a lot. Um, and I can like pinpoint one of the moments where I felt like I wasn't just a writer anymore, strictly a writer anymore. It was, I think it was sophomore year. We had a guest artist named Lillian Bertram in Margaret's poetry class, Ghost in the Machine. And then so what they did with the class was um, we, we kind of like coded poetry like we used JavaScript and then we wrote our own like lines of poetry and it became code. And then that was like a turning point for me because I was like, wait. And then, um, so I guess my like future is, um, well, I'm going to NYU Tisch and then I'm going to be majoring in interactive media arts. So I think that was really like the starting point for me to become interested in this intersection between like technology and poetry and what else is still possible but hasn't been done yet i love that um benji how about for you so coming into the program i was completely sure i am solely um an on-set person i'm talking you know speaking of cinematography and directing i was complete i was like i'm a director or a cinematographer and that's it there's no changing that and it was such a like a closed mindset that i carried all the way to my senior year and then coming to the program and you know being in Ronan's writing class I'm real I realized that I'm taking a lot of interest in writing because there's something really poetic and just sitting down and you know uh, independently creating something to later on develop with a crew it's just it's just a really interesting process and I find solid solace in it and it's just like really contemplative and meditative process that I really enjoy. I never thought that I would enjoy this kind of like peaceful art creation process. And that's something I'll definitely carry um, further with me when I go to, to college. I'm going to BU and I'm going to be in College of Communication as a film major. And writing will definitely be something I take even more interest in and something I'll focus on even more later on in my college career. So thank you for that question. Amir. Coming into WFMA, there was a balance of, well, more than a balance, but there was a lot of working in groups and ensembles together with other people and um, trying to find also that balance with learning how to work with other people while still working with myself as an artist. And I feel like in my sophomore and junior year, I got a lot of that working together and learning how to do that and mastering that. And then coming into this senior year, um, even with working with my senior project, I got a lot of experience in working with myself and coming up with concepts by myself and just experiencing myself as an artist and how I work. And I would like to say that I'm grateful for this program that actually is responsible for teaching me that and um, just giving me the opportunity to experience a little bit of both worlds. Well, a lot of both worlds. So 
I think that that is something I take on just definitely knowing how to work with others, but still at the same time, stealing some time to learn how to work with myself and come up with what I would like to do as well. And not forgetting that before you can make art with a group of people, you just need to remember that you're an artist first and you bring you into the equation and then you bring yourself together with other people. So I, I definitely appreciate that concept. I do feel like keeping relationships also with the artists that I've met at this school and the artists that have visited the school as well, like keeping relationships with all of the graduating senior workers like Debbie, Rocco, Venji, and Annie, that's definitely a thing that we can come together in like five years and make art again, like we did last year, this year. And not forget that because, you know, you personally know and have worked with artists and Wolfmas that worked on the same things and the same values that you've worked with at some point. I appreciate that. And um, I'm also going to take from this, especially this year as well. And I think I said this in my while working on my senior project, um, just keeping open relationships also and thankful relationships with the people that um, have come on and have worked with me outside of the school. So in maybe while you're in college or while I'm in college, five years from college, 10 years from college, you can still know those people and still make art with those people, just as I've said, to make art with the people that I've been making art with for the past three years. So I appreciate that. And I'm definitely going to take the variation of this department on with me as well not just keeping it to maybe like filmmaking, but I've realized that I really love writing and not just screenwriting, but I really like songwriting. And I feel like I can go somewhere with that. And I feel like I can make some money off of that. So I definitely like the writing process and making things from scratch. So I'd keep my mind open to the photography and the cinematography and the songwriting and writing through experience, which is another huge like I, I love that class and that that medium and also putting together like portfolios and stuff and just keeping the variation open so I'm not just boxed into one thing so that's what I'm going to take I really appreciate that Rocco yeah that's hard to follow up Amir <laughs> um yeah so first of all I want to second everything Amir said especially the idea of keeping an open mind coming from the guy who you know went from theater to um but for me personally there's so many things i've started this year that i definitely want to carry on uh for instance uh in the senior show like i said i was making a, a film that i adapted from my script and i want to finish that like make all three acts write out the full script film it um and finish that during the summer how long it takes um maybe submit it to a film festival i don't know we'll see um and then one thing I've also gotten really into is just in the past couple of weeks is podcasting, thanks to Matt. Um, so we started a podcasting project. And um, at first, I was only going to make like, you know, the two episodes required with my friend, right? And then we were talking about it. And now I realized that like, we're actually going to start a legit podcast and like actually do it a lot, like weekly thing, um, if we can. So like, I'm really excited for that um because that's just gonna be like really fun and awesome and we're just gonna talk about stuff that you know we can talk about and have an audience and who knows it's gonna happen but yeah so that's gonna be really fun um and personally um my major in college is gonna be business but I definitely want to continue pursuing things like filmmaking um directing um screenwriting and definitely podcasting all that stuff because like it's been such a life-changing thing this year doing all that and I, you know, the, the kind of passion I have for filmmaking is like outweighs pretty much anything else I've done in my life. So I need, I know that I need to continue that and I should stay on that path. Um, and like Amir said, keep an open mind to anything. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much, it's pretty much what I got. So. And Debbie, why don't you close us out? Yep. Of course. So. I can't really explain like what I'm going to take because there's like, I don't know if the other seniors feel me, but there's like a little bit of something in Wufma, like a little, like something special, you know, like a little bit of magic or something like that. And it's kind of like a feeling of like, I don't know, like 
unity and growth and things like that. So I, I definitely have to take this little bit of magic with me. You can have a little bit too, Margaret, but I'm going to take it. And what else am I going to take? I'm also going to take like all my friends from Wolfma because we're going to be friends for life, whether they want it or not. And also I'm going to take my skills as well. Um, I'll be going to Barnard College next year, majoring in philosophy and minoring in gender studies. And I wanted to hit the books because I feel like continuing to make good art involves like sort of understanding the world around you and the, your place in it, which is something I grapple a lot with in my art. So that's something I want to explore while I'm in college. Um, but in the future, future, <laughs> um, I think I'd like to work in an art publication like Tashin or like a literary magazine like M plus one or the Paris Review. And of course I want to continue writing poetry. And since New York City is like the city of opportunity, I'm sure I'll find like really cool people and mentors to continue to help me grow, things like that. Excellent. I, I'd just like to thank our students, Debbie, Annie, Amir, Rocco, and Benji, WFMA department head, Margaret Funkhauser, and faculty member, Matt Zeifert, for being a part of tonight's crush. The first in our five-part series, complementing the virtual presentation of spring performances and showcases from each of our five art majors. A special word of thanks to all of you for joining us tonight. We invite you to tune in this Saturday, May 22nd at 7 p.m. for the Music Crush, which will feature students and faculty from our voice department discussing the creation of the opera, The Little Prince, which will premiere here on the Walnut Hill YouTube channel at 8 p.m. Thank you again from everyone at Walnut Hill. Have a great night.